Hi you guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. I think uh, all of you recognize the fly we're gonna tie today. Um, I really been looking forward to do this tutorial because it's been a few years since I did the last one with the Vaskebjörn and I've developed some other techniques to tie the fly. You know, I tie hundreds, maybe also thousands of these flies every year. So, you know, I kind of had the time to practice how to do it and uh, I found out that there's a couple of things I do so that I wanted to show you, okay? So, but first, a cup of coffee, take a nice cup of coffee and cheers. Hmm? <sighs> great, great. Okay, so we're gonna tie the Vaskebjörn and um, as always, I will put down a link to the skip the intro. You can see under in the description, uh, skip the intro, press that one. You don't have to listen to the intro. You can go directly to the tying of the flies because I'm going to show you Vaskebjörn uh, or as my friend says, uh, Runar Kabbe, he says washing machine. <laughs> and I find that quite funny, but it's pronounced Vaskebjörn. It's not like raccoon, it's not like washing bear, it's Vaskebjörn. That's the name of the fly. It's like my name in English is Eivind. <laughs> it's not Edwin. Yeah, so, okay. So we're gonna tie this fly. And I decided to tie this fly in, um, in a size 4 and in a size 6. And I'm also gonna show you uh, Vaskebjörn tied without the bead chains. So uh, I think I'm gonna put on uh, links to the fly tying for each and one of them. So you can go down and you can see uh, Vaskebjörn size six starts and Vaskebjörn Hornet Green starts. You can just click there so you can see the which fly you want to, want to see me tie. So yeah, now uh, as always, there's the full complete material list over the flies in the description as long as a link to my sponsor, Nordisk Fiskutstyr, and my webpage, and uh, also to my Patreon page, if you want to become a Patreon. I have a lot of Patreon supporters, and you know, they support me in the work I do, and that's, thanks a lot. Yeah, so, okay, the materials. Uh, the big issue with this fly, uh, it's not an issue, but it's the hackles. Uh, I've been buying these Mets hackles for many, many years, and I know uh, many of you are struggling to get these uh, capes. Uh, in here in Scandinavia, it's you can't find them anywhere. These are the Mets Magnum in a grizzly. Here's the here's the here's the pack. <laughs> here's the feathers. As you can see, these feathers are amazing. They, they are. Uh, they are nice and big, huge feathers. These are streamer feathers, and they're like perfect for Vaskebjörn. I, if I, when I look for a feather for 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 this fly, I like the feather to have, uh, you know, it's it's the the pattern, the the grizzled feather. It's quite, uh, you know, it's not uh, big sections of uh, white and black and white and black. It's it's, it's nice and tight, you know, like this. And the feather should be like a thin stem and uh, and and there should be a, the, the amount of fibers, uh, they, they are close, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna list up a couple of other capes you can use for this fly. And that's the Keog Saltwater Cape. Uh, you get a lot of feathers from that cape and it's it's fairly cheap cheap and not cheap but cheap <laughs> uh, and um, you know uh, if you're gonna tie just for yourself you're not gonna tie flies for sale you will have that cape almost for the rest of your life so that's a great cape to to buy the the, the Keog saltwater cape and also you have the whiting booger pack a whiting booger pack in grizzly you will find that the larger feathers, they work great for a size four, a size six and a size eight. That you can use that. And also I've seen the Cocteleon in Grizzly. They are great. Uh, the fly looks amazing and I can highly recommend a Cocteleon Grizzly. So that's the capes. Uh, if you're struggling, I will leave a link to my sponsor for you guys in Scandinavia or in Norway, if you wanna hook up in a cape, 
uh, I can recommend Keog Saltwater. I will just put a link to the cape in the description. I also put down the suggestions for different capes, okay? And then we're gonna use some dubbing. And I use Seal Spur. Seal Spur Inflorescent Red and Seal Spur Natural. And I've mixed in some UV dub in this one. Ice dub UV Pearl, just a little bit. So you get that little UV shine in the fly. And uh, if you don't get have seals fur, you can use other types of dubbing. I can also put up some um, some substitute for the seals fur. I know you guys in the states, some of you don't can't find seals fur. I will put on a substitute for what you can use. So that's that, and uh, we use some crystal pearl, crystal UV pearl, two flash uh, in this fly, and we're gonna use some bead chains in medium black. And we're also going to use the white thread from uh, Semperfly, also the red thread. I need the red head, that's how it is. And for the hook, I'm using Gamagatsu F314 in a size 4 and a size 6. I also have it in a size 8. I'm not going to do the size 8 today, I'm going to do size 4 and, uh, and 6. And I tie this one, look at this one. I will show you down here. This is... Uh, Vaskebjörn, I just call it, you know, uh, <laughs> Green Hornet. It's tied with the Archilite, again, the owner Archilite. I know I ramble about this hook, but it's amazing. You should try it. So it's gonna be three flies. It's gonna be a long one, okay? But I'm gonna tie the uh, size six pretty fast. So first, a cheers again, coffee. Mmm. Perfect time for fly tying, you know? Yeah. Are you ready? Let's start. Okay, so here's the fly. As you can see, uh, this is the proportion. This is the right proportions for Vaskebjörn. Uh, where the bead chain sits on the hook, the hackle, how I like it to look, you know? This is how it should look when you're done. So yeah, let's put in a hook and let's get started. There we go, and white thread, I need my scissors. I ready, start in the middle. Just fasten your thread, snip it off. Go back. Now your sh thread should be aligned with the barb. This is, this is so important to get the right proportion on this fly. I see this from time to time. The eyes is in the middle, the hackle, it's not right. Uh, so this is kind of a, you know, a disclosure, I mean, we are talking about fly tying technique. We are talking about how I like to uh, take the hook and make different sections. This section we use for hackle. This section we use for, you know, the trigger point. This section I use for the eyes, and so on and so on and so on. That's why I always say stop there, stop there, do that, do that. You know, it's important to get the fly right because I know. When you look at my flies, you want to tie Vaskebjörn, you tie it, you send me a picture, and I can see the proportions often it's not correct. So make sure when you do this, look at the thread. It should be where I show you, okay? <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not uh, so serious guy, but I'm, when it comes to fly tying, tying technique, it should be right, okay? Let's go back. So now make sure your thread is just by the barb. And we're gonna tie in our hackle. Look at this amazing feather. And I like to pull off the, the fluffy part. And we're gonna do shiny part towards yourself, you know, towards me. Thumb on the shiny part, finger underneath. And I, I don't like to tie it in at this point. I like to put it in about six millimeters Take a couple of loose turns, two, three, four, and cross your thread, five, six, seven. These are loose thread. I don't pull it, I just careful because I'm gonna show you. And I'm gonna hold it, pull out a little bit thread, and go back up, and then I'm gonna pull like that. And also, if you look now, where my, the, uh, the point my thread is, that's the perfect spot for the bead chain eyes. So when I go up, I set the point where I want the eyes to go, you see? Did you understand that? So snip this one off, 
that's the point where the uh, bead chain eyes goes. So go back down again to the middle and I go and I move the thread so it doesn't come in the way and we're gonna hackle. Now look, you, you got a tail because you have tied down six millimeters of the hackle, you lift, you have a tail. Pull it back in a size four, I'm looking for two to three turns. It all depends on your hackle. And um, we are tying a size four, we want a, you know, a size four fly. One, two, yeah, three turns, I think three turns. Two, three, yeah, that's perfect. Pinch it with your finger, go back with the thread, pick up the hackle, oops, pick up the hackle, lock it down, tie down, hold it tight, pull it off, pull the fibers back and don't tie over the hackle because you, you want the hackle to spread out like that, okay? Don't tie over it. Now your thread has moved just a millimeter, okay? That's perfect. Go forwards again. Now we're gonna set the beach and eyes. And now your thread is just where you snipped off your hackle. Like that. Put them under and it's perfect every time. And I'm not gonna show, you know, you see I did this pretty fast because these tutorials are not for, you know, beginners, but you know how to put on the beach and eyes. I use super glue always. So I'm just gonna go a little bit this way, a little bit that way, a little bit this way, cross over, cross over, go forwards. Make a big anchor point, you know, yeah, like that. And then, this is quite loose, but I use the most amazing super glue in the world, super glue from Wurt. <laughs> My friend works at Wurt, Wurt, <laughs> Stig, you know. And we're gonna just glue this thing. I always do this because then you make a much better fly. It's it's so much more durable. Uh, over and under. Make sure the glue goes a little bit towards each, each side, like that, like that. This is never gonna uh, get off. And I kind of arm, not arm, but I'm kind of strengthening the glue again, but by going over it. So it kind of lock, locks it down. Perfect, and then we're gonna put in some flash, crystal flash, UV pearl, double it up, two on the top, just hold them, go back, don't tie down your hackles, go forwards again, I'm gonna start dubbing. We're gonna use red, fluorescent red, it's important with the fluorescent uh, trigger point. And now, when you're gonna dub seals for it's important you don't overdo the amount of dubbing. Okay, that's so important because if you don't, if you put on too much, you're gonna struggle, struggle with dubbing, to, to dub it on the thread. So make a nice thin, thin dubbing noodle. And I'm gonna do this quite fast. Did you see what I did? If you don't stop, if you just go chuk 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 chuk, the 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 dubbing will follow around. And as you see, I will I dubbed back, and I dubbed force and the thread went like tuk, 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 all the way through locking that dubbing down okay so go forwards in front of the eyes we're gonna tie in the section in front of the eyes as you see the hackle in the back is perfect now it's important not to overdress this fly so again the shiny part up lock it down take a couple of loose turns tie it down we're gonna take one turn that's just a half turn, that's one turn. It's so important not to overdress dress this fly. And pull some of them down and some of them up and we're gonna do, use the three finger grip. I call this the three finger grip because these two fingers are gonna grab the fibers down below and this finger is gonna grab the fibers in the top. So go like that, make sure this is a practice like that and hold it force the thread as up there, make sure you kind of climb up between the eyes and go down again. <laughs> oh, my English is so good. And now we're gonna stop here. And why I do that is because 
Now I set the point where we should tie in the last hackle and we also we need space, you know, to tie the head. So this is important. Now look at this. I want these fibers to kind of fall, you know, kind of go a little bit down, you know. So as I'm going to I'm going to manipulate the fibers just by rubbing them. By doing this, you manipulate the fibers to kind of crunch down a little bit. I don't know, crunch, yeah. So the fibers are like that, and you kind of wiggle them back and forward, and you make them like that. I like that. Perfect. And now we're gonna dub the front. And as always, just a little bit. Don't overdo the dubbing. And if you have tied some of these flies, you actually, if you're lucky, you can just go back and forwards and done. I'm gonna let's see if I've put not put on the right amount. Okay. Look at how thin this dubbing noodle is. Look at how thin it is. And when I'm dubbing uh, seals fur, I'm I'm really really reaping. You know, I'm I'm using a lot of friction to make this nice and thin. So now I'm gonna use my finger. I'm gonna comb for every turn. Look, one, two, three. One in the back, forwards again, and you're done. That's it. Now I've done this many, many times. This is something you have to, you know, practice. But when you get the uh, get the technique, this is this fly takes me about four minutes to tie. So yeah, and then we're gonna finish off in the front. I just love these hackles. But you know, and. I'm gonna tie in the tip. It's the same feather, just one turn. Don't overdo it, just one turn. Tie it off, lock it down, pull it, pull everything back, make a nice, go all the way down to the hook eye and make a nice head because you're gonna finish off with a red thread. We finish. And Vaske Bjorn in a size 4 is soon done. Oh no! Why me? I think I'm just gonna save, try to rescue this with a half hitch and I'm gonna go over, okay? This is this is fly tying. This is how things go sometimes, you know? Let's see if we can do this. That's how it is. Do, 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 do. The clutch. Are you ready? Let's go over the with the red thread, okay? Like that. And I just go back and I finish off. And I'm gonna pull it a little bit. And I'm gonna finish off. Oh, I got some super glue on my whip finisher. That's not good. Okay, and then go forwards again. Two, three, four, five. Like that, snip it off, and then the three finger grip again, because I don't want the hackle to be like that. I want it to, to kind of fall back, and we're gonna just chuk -chuk 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 uh, turn the fly a little bit, and chuk -chuk 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 and there you go. That's the Vaskebjörn. That's the real. That's how it should look. And if you follow my instructions now, we're gonna you're gonna see that every fly is gonna be the same from time to time. You know, when, when you come down to the to the shoreline on the fish, you know that uh, my 10 flies or five or what number you like to have in the box, you should never go without one. <laughs> you know that your flies, they're the same. They are exactly the same and they're how I like to have them, you know. Varnish, I like to varnish two times. I let it dry and I varnish one more time. So that's Vaskebjörn in a size four, my friends. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of, I'm gonna tie it in a size six for you guys because I know many of you are actually fishing this, this fly in a size six. I'm just gonna do it quite fast. Okay, so if you don't wanna see this, you can just skip over to the next one. Just, just a few things here you need to understand because now you have tied a size four, you wanna tie a size six and you wanna make sure the size six is smaller than the size four. 
because you know the difference in the hook measurements measurements it's not that big so you have to you know have a smaller hackle there's the hackle i'm looking at this is almost the same length as the hook i'm going to show you the big one for the size 4 this is a, look at how big this is the two different hackles so it's important same thing six millimeter in loose three four back up one two three four hold pull set the point for the eyes and it's there snip it off go back again be careful go forwards and on a size six i'm only gonna take two turns one two because you, you want the fly to be smaller and light more more lightly dressed okay pull it off pull it back tie close to the hackle stems go forwards stop there there's the tie in point for our bead chain eyes oh that's full of fibers two seconds cross turn lock it down and you're gonna find that your flies are going to be the same when you follow these measurements, okay? Go over like that and like that. And you, uh, can you see the hook moving when I'm tying? I'm really tying, you know, I'm my grip is like on the thread back here. My fi the fingers are like this. So I always make sure uh, the thread is nice and tight. I never, never, never let go. So, you know, if you have been tying like that and you let go, the tension will uh, kind of go away. So yeah, that's important. Some super glue. I always take my time to put on super glue. Like that. Like that. I'm going to have some crystal flash. Like that. On the top, go. don't tie over your hackles. Snip them off a little bit longer than the hackles like that. And then we're going to take some red. Try to try to take the right amount the first time. You can take do this in two parts, dub down and up again, but it seems like the dubbing technique I'm using, the, the, the dubbing part gets a lot stronger. Come on, let's do this. Oh take your just don't stop. Go down, go up again. Perfect, move your thread. Go over like that, careful, go forwards, lock it down and then just take one and we're going to take a fast lock I'm just put pull this up and move the thread over like this in one turn. <laughs> you can try that out if you want. Pull it back, three finger grip, go back with the thread, make sure the thread is all the way up there, set the point for the dubbing. And the hackle, it's there. Rub this one. Make sure they go down. I like these to stand up like that. That's the Lost Gibbon. I like to see the right amount of dubbing in the first go. And it's not. It's it's not. Uh, you know, if you see the thread go, it's it's not. Uh, don't worry. It need the dubbing noodle needs to be nice and thin. Go back, go forwards. And that's something I grabbed onto there. The body is perfect. Finish off with the hackle in the front. Couple of turns. Now you're gonna see this fly. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna have one more there. Like that. It's light, lightly dressed. A couple of turns, pull it, three finger grip again. I know this is going a little bit fast, but you guys. 
I've done this fly so many times the tutorial, so like that. Make sure your thread doesn't break off. Snip it off. Th three finger grip. And finish off with the red thread. Snip it off. Do -do -do. Be finished. Do -do -do. That's how a size 6 should look. So this is a size 6 and I've been uh, make, made sure that I have followed my my sections, you know, my points. The hackle uh, in the back, the eyes, the dubbing section, the trigger point, the hackle in the front, the, the body and the front hackle. You need to do this. If you, if, if you do this, you're going to find your flies will look the same. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to varnish this fly. This is a fly that's going in my box, actually, because I only have three flies in size six and I need five if I can find a space for it. A nice, nice dollop varnish. So, okay, so this is the Green Hornet. This is Vaskebjörn without beachy and eyes. I know, I also tied this one. Look at this small Vaskebjörn. It's tied with ice stub in the front and ice stub UV pink. And the, this UV pink dubbing, ice dub, is the same dubbing I use for Fnugge. You know Fnugge? Yeah, same dubbing. And the ice dub, the same dubbing I use for Fnugge. I really love to try to make as many patterns as I can out of the materials I have, you know, so I don't have to buy a lot of materials. This is a Vaskebjörn, the pink one, tied on the uh, owner Archilite in a size 6. This caught me a lot of sea trials the other day. So yeah, I'm not going to show the small one. I'm just going to show this one, okay? But if you want to tie this one, use the measurements. Use the same measurements I'm going to show you here to this one. And it will, it will look like this, okay? Just take one turn in the front with Hackle. Make it nice and light. Okie dokie, let's go, let's go, let's go. Archilite, ulnar Archilite, I love this hook, yes I do, I do. We're gonna use a little bit other measurements because of the hook. This is an, another hook, so I'm gonna go back to the bend, not by the barb, but by the bend. Now you need to see the bend of the hook, oh, just by the bend. And then tie in a hackle, I'm using large hackles, you see they are, these are large bigger than the hook, I, I need that, almost like a spay hackle. Six millimeters in on the hackle, go two, three, four, up again, loose, hold it, tighten down. And now I'm gonna set the point where I want, you know, we're gonna have uh, uh, the, the trigger point and the hackle, and the point is almost by the tip, almost by the tip. It's it's more like, you know, in between the, the hook point and the barb. And go back again. I'm going back because then I'm closer to where I'm gonna finish off the hack girl. That's why I take one turn there and go forwards, big wraps, and then take, oh, it broke on me, it broke on me. You will always get one or two hackle that will break on you, okay? Oh, the hook point is sharp. Two turns, that's okay. That's enough, go back again, quick lock. You need to watch the hook point. It's a long hook point. Now make sure the measurement for your thread is right by the barb. You see? So now we've used this part for the hackle. We're gonna use in between here for the trigger point. But first we're gonna tie in some um, crystal flash and I'm just gonna use UV pearl. You can use some green if you want, but I'm using the same. As I like to, this UV pearl is beautiful in the water. On the top, creep up on it like that. Snip it off a little bit longer. Now we're gonna tie in the 
Chartreuse. This is fluorescent Chartreuse. Chartreuse. I don't know how you say pronounce it. Chartreuse. Chartreuse. <laughs> I don't care. You know what I mean. Fluorescent. You need that fluorescent, okay? So make sure it's uh, almost the right amount. The same here. A nice thin dubbing noodle. Take a turn if you're struggling with it. I was struggling a little bit. So look at this. Nice and thin and firm dubbing noodle. Go back. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go on. Go on. Go forward again and stop. Like that. And then we're going to tie in another hackle section. No bead chain eyes. And this is going to be right by the hook point. One turn perhaps. I can see the hackle is nice and thick. Quick lock. Pull it off. Take it back. Make sure your thread is by the hook point. I'm gonna back up this one a little bit. I'm gonna make sure. Yeah. And we're gonna take our three finger grip like that. And then we're gonna go on to tie in the green eyes. The super fluorescent kryptonite green. You see? Vaskebjörn kryptonite green. I'm not so green hornet or something I called it. I think we're gonna call it Vaskebjörn kryptonite green, okay? The kryptonite green Vaskebjörn. And we're gonna put on our easy shrimp eyes. I'm gonna feel out here and I'm gonna snip off the tip. They're usually a little bit too long. Now this point should be exactly there. Because then the eyes is not too far back of the hook. I. You know, I see this a lot. Many of you guys are tying in eyes like that. And my experience, this is just my personal experience, but if you do that, these often catch your tippet. It often hooks, you know, it tangles up all the time. And I think you should try to make sure the eyes, shrimp eyes, don't pass the hook, uh, hook bend. Just a little bit, but don't stick them out like that. It doesn't look right. So, uh, so... I think, yeah, so it's important that try to tie the, the shrimp eyes like this. On the top, oh, it's a little bit close to the hook eye. I need to snip off a little bit more. I need to make sure I have space for my front hackle. That's important. On the top, go back. Make sure your thread is by the hook point. Woo! It's perfect. This eyes won't move at all. Oh, it's so perfect. Look at the colors, man. Look at the colors. I'm gonna try this pattern on uh, Bornhorn. You just wait and see. So I'm gonna make the front body and we are soon done with this video. It's gonna be a long one again, but I know you appreciate it. I know, I, I, I thank you. Thanks a lot for all the feedback, you guys. That means a lot to me. I'm always a little bit nervous, you know, but you know. It doesn't seem like I, I need to be nervous because you guys love the English tutorials. So thanks a lot. Yeah, go forwards again. Tie in the last section. Now I've made three millimeter space for myself. You need that. Yeah, I think one. Yeah, one turn is enough. I don't want any more. And I, I need this tie to be nice and translucent. Okay. Finish off with a head. V finish tool. I freaking love this pattern. Try, let's try this fly in. Uh, oh, I caught a hackle there. I'm gonna fix that. Let's try this one. How about a fluorescent orange? An orange fluorescent orange eye. So you can you do this in pink. You can do this in, yeah. Okay, three finger grip. This is the look I'm looking for. I want this fly to be like this. Like this. I can see I have a little bit. I'm just going to use my lighter. And now we're actually going to use this one. This is from Semperfly. They have a 6.0 wax thread in fluorescent green. And I'm just going to use my hands. I don't have this rigged up on a bobbin. I'm just going to go like this old school. Really, really old school. <laughs> I've actually done this a couple of times. I tied flies with my bare hands. I don't have a spool. I hold the hook in my hands. You should try it. It's quite fun. Snip it off. 
And the kryptonite green, Vaskebjørn. Vaskebjørn kryptonite green is done. And we're almost done with this video. And I just love, this is the varnish I've u I'm using, Vanyard. For me, I have used this, uh, the same, the same varnish I've used since I, since I start tying flies, you know, I was 10 years old. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 44 years old now, so when I smell the, the you know, when I smell this varnish, it, it takes me back every time. So yeah, look at the back. This is why this fly works so great. You have the big pulsing hackle, you have a trigger point, you have a fly that looks like a shrimp, it could look like a small goby. And when you fish it, you have seen how I fish this fly in my video, so I don't have to explain it. So, so here we go. This is, this is the Vaskebjörn. Here we have it in size 6. And we're gonna put on the size 4. Yay! There we go. Look at those amazing flies. I love these flies. I just love them, okay? And also try this one. This pink. Now we have a Vaskebjörn cluster. Okay, um, this is a long one, okay, but I think we have to, I, I was thinking on, you know, it's gonna be too many videos. You can just go in the description, press on the links, I'm gonna put on links to the different flies, you can skip this and skip that and skip to the outro and however you want it, okay? So I'm gonna try the last sip of the coffee, I think it's gonna be cold. It's cold. <laughs> yes, and as always, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for all the support I have. Uh, when you send me these mails, it kind of pushes me forward to continue these videos. It, it means a lot to me, so yeah. And as always, I'm gonna put the, the material list down below. Just press down and you can see all the materials I'm gonna put in. As I told in the beginning, I'm gonna put in different types of hackle you can substitute for the mats I use. I'm gonna put in the Keog and I'm gonna, you can go in there and, and see, okay? I'm gonna put in all the materials I use for all the different flies. And the link to my sponsor, he, I, that's the only sponsor I got, Nudis Fiskus today. If I haven't, hadn't had them, had, if I hadn't had them, I, I'm not sure I could do this. So thanks a lot Nudis. You're my angels, and uh, thanks to the uh, Patreon supporters. I have a lot of supporters, and you guys are also the reason I can do this. Yeah, and um, as always, I think I, I have. There's a there's a couple of more videos coming up. There's there's several more flies we need to to do. So, but soon we're done with the one side of the box. We're gonna do hoover shrimp, hover hoover shrimp, hoover shrimp, hover shrimp. We're gonna take that discussion when it comes to that fly. I'm gonna do Jiggy, and we have uh, Lilimesis, that's a small uh, sh shrimp fly. And we have the black shrimp, and uh, yeah, and Spakutlingen. And I think that's that, okay? Oh yeah, we got uh, maybe one more. I'm gonna show you one, if you want to see it. I'm working on a new stickleback pattern, and I'm calling it the Cripple Magnus. Let's get rid of you guys. Look at this little fly, man. I have been fishing with it and I caught several sea trouts on this fly. It it's kind of looks more like a small stickleback. You got the, the tail and you got the hackle on the top and you got the olive color-ish color of the stickleback and you got the white eyes. And you know, when I'm done tying my Vaskebjörn, I have a lot of these guys. These are the tips that's left from my Vaskebjörn. These tips, I use them for these flies. I, I'm always thinking like that. I want to use as much as I can of the, of the, of the materials. And also I can show you down here on the camera. This front here is perfect to make a small woolly bugger for trout. Believe me, take, you use this one, just pull out these parts and make a grizzly, small grizzly magnus, small grizzly magnus fly for brown trout with this stuff. Amazing. I just put them in some boxes. Okay, 
I'm done talking. We're, we're almost talking for an hour, you guys, but I don't care. I love doing this. And, um, and again, thanks for all your support. Uh, I've been uploading every day and it's gonna be one tomorrow as well, okay? So cheers and I hope you have a nice weekend. I'm doing this on a Friday, so thanks. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>